of time to finish the question in class, so I decided to actually show case the entire thing, the entire finish to the question on projectile motion, uh, just with a quick five minute lesson. So here is the where we left off. Uh, you're given the equation for the height of the baseball after it's been hit, and they're asking you to find the maximum height. And that can be done a few different ways. You could use your graphing calculator to track it down. Since it's a parabola, you could get away with using the axis of symmetry formula, but a more sophisticated and neat way to work on the question is by using derivatives. Uh, when the ball actually hits its highest point, it's going to have a velocity that's equal to zero, the upward velocity. So once we hit the very top here, once the slope actually equals zero, the meaning behind that is that the velocity would be equal to zero. In the beginning, the, uh, you know, the baseball's got lots of lift off. I mean, it's lifting off the, off the bat at 44 feet per second, and gradually that speed is being reduced down until it's raising up at like, you know, three feet per second. Eventually it becomes zero feet per second, and that's where the, the crest or the peak of the ball is gonna be. From there, it's gonna have a negative velocity. So over here, maybe the velocity is negative two feet per second. Over here, maybe negative 25 feet per second. And eventually, it's gonna land. So the question is, find the maximum height. So we use that trick. To find the maximum height or a minimum height on a graph, you set the derivative equal to zero. So the derivative is negative 32t plus 44. And it just takes uh, a few seconds to find the answer there. Subtract away 44 from both sides and divide by negative 32. And there you have it. It'll take a little bit more than one second for it to hit uh, its highest point, which ends up being one point. Point three seven five. Now that's the time it takes to reach its maximum height. What some of the students did on the quiz, and they didn't finish off the question, that's the time it takes. We need to know what the maximum height is. So what's left to do is find the maximum height. This is the equation for the height. So you find your answer by using the derivative equation, and then you continue on to fi finish the final answer by using the original equation. So all that's left to do is plug in 1.375 into the original equation, which would be negative 16 times 1.375 squared plus 44 times 1.375 plus the 4. And that comes out to be the height of 34.25 feet. All right, and we've got one more, one more question to do. And that is find out when it actually hits the ground. Since the ball is actually starting off the ground, starting off and it's starting off four feet off the ground, you just can't double the answer uh, from from uh, this part of the question right here. If the ball did start on the ground, then you could just double it. If it took 1.375 seconds to go up, it's going to take another 1.375 seconds to go back down again. But here, since it's already starting off the ground, the answer is not going to be that simple. So for question E, it's find out when it hits the ground. And that can be done by when it hits the thinking about when it hits the ground, what's true? The height is zero. This is the height. So all I got to do is set the original equal to zero and go from there. You could try to factor this one, but it's not going to be uh, one that you can factor. Instead, you're going to have to use the quadratic formula. And might as well show that off in all its glory. So x, or t in this case, is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. 
to make the appropriate substitutions, you end up getting that t is equal to negative 44 plus or minus the square root of 44 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times 4, all divided by 2 times negative 16. Take the time to work that out in your calculator, you'll get two answers. One of them is a negative answer. Negative 0 0.09 seconds, approximately. And that doesn't make any sense because we're talking about positive values of time. The second answer that you get ends up being about 2.8 seconds. And that's the true answer right there. And that's it for the demonstration of projectile motion. Hope you enjoyed it.